this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a fabulous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, Charles III was crowned King of England last Saturday, and it was a spectacular event. Attending the event were dignitaries, noblemen, and royalties from other parts of the world. This couple's entrance into Westminster Abbey has gone viral. Just the majesty and the audacity of them, the pride, the confidence, the majesty, I can't, I can't improve on it, of this couple really I think was just a little bit shocking to everybody because they are not dressed in traditional Western wear. This is not the first time that an African leader or leaders have worn their traditional garments in a Western affair like the coronation, but this is the first time it has received this much fanfare. But Africa is more in the limelight now. Russia is running to Africa trying to get their support. The United States is running to Africa trying to get their support. China is running to Africa trying to get their support. So with all of this heightened interest in Africa, naturally the world is interested in what they look like and what they wear to a royal coronation in the West. And now we have the answer. And this couple was ready for the spotlight. I didn't mean they own this. They own that walk down there, y'all. And I looked at them and I thought, what is it about this couple that is just keeping my attention? My eyes were glued to them as they walked down the aisle. And I kept trying to think, what is it? What is it? At first I thought, well, they're not dressed like everybody else. And then I thought, they're not dressed like everybody else. I didn't know who he was at the time, but I knew he was somebody important. And then the commentator said, this is King Otofumo Ositutu II, King of the Ashantis and Lady Julia. And I realized then, King of the Ashantis, that explains the gold. They have a very good look. Jet black or black enough. Beautiful skin. Look at the skin. I mean, the skin is just blowing on this sister. And look at what they're, what they're really wearing. He's not wearing a big crown on his head with a lot of jewels that they stole from somebody else. Look what he's wearing around there. He's got a gold nugget hanging down there. And, and you know that is pure gold. And look at the bracelets. And look at his fingers. Hey, this couple has got it going on for real. And she is more, she's more sedated. She's got on a beautiful gold necklace and gold earrings because who are they they are Ghanaians and what is Ghana it is the gold coast that's their natural mineral resource so they own that the Ashanti kingdom is one of the greatest kingdoms of West Africa the Ashanti said they were never defeated by the British when the British came they came trying to take over everything and the Ashantis have something called a stool. And I know somebody's going to correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, they say the stool is the heart and soul of the Ashantis. And this British person came in, found out about it, and demanded that they bring that stool to him. And based on what I read, the Ashantis went wild on him. And he left that stool alone. But the Ashantis say they have never been defeated by the British. So they've never been defeated. I don't know how they pulled that off. But they said they've never been defeated, and I believe them. Gold is a natural mineral resource in West Africa, as is diamonds and silver and platinum and all the other things that they have naturally. They don't have to go outside of their country to get those things. And they are the reason why people won't leave Africa alone. No matter how much they try to talk down on Africa and Africans and try to blow Africa off, Africa has the mother load of everything that's natural and beautiful in the earth. And that's why we have a hard time because we're African descended. And that's why Africa has a, t a hard time. So it's stuff like this, this gold that keeps people running there. And they don't want to come over there and get some of it. They want to dig all of it up out of the ground. And that's a sign of people that are not used to anything. So Africans are unique in that they don't have to steal what they have. It is God-given. 
so they can walk with pride and with dignity with their heads held high. To me, they have a natural elegance. They don't have to put on a show. They're just walking calmly, but with so much dignity. This kente cloth, it looks natural and common, but look how bright and brilliant. Just beautiful. So I say, this is what pride looks like. He could easily have come stepping up in there with a custom-made French suit, and she could have gone to the best designer in the world, because these people are rich. And she could have stepped out with the fanciest French outfit known to me, if that's what she wanted to do. But she didn't. She repped her own country. And so I guess the king of the Ashanti said, I don't have to come up in here in a western-made suit. I can wear my own traditional king outfit because I'm a king myself. Look at this couple. This is pride. And this is what I love this. I love looking at this couple. And I think that if African Americans could have seen something like this <laughs> 75 years ago, it would have done a lot, I think, for the ego of black people. To me, this is what pride looks like. It's pride in your skin tone. Because look at them. They don't look like they've been bleaching. We, we keep hearing about the problem of skin bleaching in Africa. But these people don't look like they have gone anywhere near a skin bleaching jar. And they are as beautiful as anybody in that church. And she is built like a real black woman. She's got some meat on her bones. She's got a shape on her body. And she's got a twist in her hips. So she's made like a sister. She's switching that booty. Look at that. She got that She got that shape. She got that black woman booty on her. So she knows that's all she needs. And, she, and that outfit is fitting her. She is wearing that outfit. They look wonderful. They look fabulous. And I would think that the Ashantis would be very proud of their king not coming up in there in some blue suit that's too tight or something that's not even comfortable. But he's saying, who he's, the statement he's making is with his jewelry. And, and to me, it's important because it's not something. See, now they are all, this crown that this crown that King Charles had, he's got diamonds from India. The Indians are asking for their diamonds back. He's got diamonds from South Africa. They're asking for their diamonds back. So, see, the king of Ashanti is wearing his own stuff. God bless the child that's got his own. He ain't stole none of this stuff. Hey, so in a way, I think this is what pride looks like. And just on a more humorous note, when the queen died, a lot of the African leaders were hurtled onto a bus to Westminster Abbey because they couldn't bring their limousines up in there, although Joe Biden brought his. So... For this occasion, the president of Ghana, I think, who is different from the king of the Ashantis, but the president of Ghana, I think, wanted a picture posted on social media of him getting into his limousine because he, he didn't want to get dragged when he got back to Ghana. So he wanted everybody to know I rode up in here in my limo. So good for the president of Ghana. And, you know, as an African-American, Ghana is kind of special because Ghana has become or is becoming the homecoming headquarters for black Americans. So this is really wonderful for Ghana. They came, they have a, they have a relationship with, uh, with the British. Here is the king of the Ashanti. Back to the king of the Ashanti. He's, here he is at Buckingham Palace talking to Prince Charles and his, I'm not going to say servant, his assistant is standing with an umbrella over his head inside the building. So that umbrella must signify something other than just trying to keep the rain off. So I'm going to ask the Africans, will you please tell me what the umbrella stands for? I'm guessing it's something like um, a crown. I'm not sure. So let me know. Um, and last, um, there were other Africans that came in their traditional African attire, and they look beautiful too. See, when they do it right, nobody does it better. When Africans do it right, nobody does it better. And that's just the way it is. So anyway, I wanted to do a shout out to the king of the Ashantis for letting us know what pride looks like. Because he was not ashamed to come up in there in his traditional Ashanti 
attire because that's what he wears among his own people because here he is among his own people and he's also wearing his kingly kenti cloth attire. So anyway, just a shout out to this couple for really bringing class and, and dignity and, and majesty to a majestic event. All right, y'all, let me know what you think about the video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.